Now let's begin by talking about English language A, paper one. Now, as you can see behind me, essentially I've sketched out a walkthrough of essentially what to anticipate of section A of this paper. And this is of course the first half of the paper. Now the paper in total, bear in mind in terms of timings, the entire paper for both section A and section B is two and oh, two hours. 15 minutes. Now, given that both sections, so both section A, which is the non-fiction text section, and section B, which is the transactional writing, both of them are worth equal amounts of marks. If you do your numbers, it's 45 marks in total for section A and 45 marks in total for section B. You want to split this time up, so these two hours and 15 minutes evenly, okay? You don't want to spend more time on section A and less time on section B because essentially what you're going to do is you might be securing the marks, the 45 marks as much as you can for section A, but you may be neglecting section B, okay? So you want to split your time evenly. Now let's look over section A in terms of timings, but also what to anticipate in terms of the wording of the questions, okay? So let's walk through it. Now, as I've mentioned, section A is the first part in the paper. To be honest, whether you start with section A or section B, it depends on you, but I would suggest just work through it chronologically, okay? So starting with section A, which uh, is the non-fiction text, remember that you're going to be given an unseen text, that would be the first text that you get, and of course you're going to compare, you have some questions within this section that ask you to look at the seen Edexcel text, so a text from the anthology itself, and of course some of the questions are going to ask you about this text which you've already studied, so this is the scene part of the paper, and of course you're also going to be responding to an unseen extract, and when it comes to how this is split up, do bear in mind that text one, which is the unseen text that you get to, you've never seen this before in the paper. Now, the questions one, two and three in this paper will only be solely related to that unseen text. In other words, the first three questions in section A are related to the unseen text, okay? Now, in terms of timings, always remember number one, because obviously you're getting a text that you've never seen before, you want to allocate the first 10 minutes of these two and a half hours when you're looking at section A, allocate that time to reading through this unseen text, planning, highlighting, also already thinking about the similarities that it shares with the seen text you're going to be asked to compare it to, okay? So in terms of the first thing that you need to do when you're starting off with section A, spend 10 minutes, set aside those first 10 minutes to read through and highlight and you know, kind of pick up on all the kind of commonalities and themes that your unseen text that you've never seen before will have with the seen text that you're gonna be asked to compare it to. Now, when it comes to question number one, which is related to, of course, text one, question one is worth two marks, okay? So it's just a question which is very, very brief. And in terms of wordings, you're always going to be asked to select two words or phrases that relate to a keyword, okay? So for this question, don't spend more than three and a half minutes and then you move on, okay? Question one, it's simply worth two marks so you don't want to be spending too much time kind of writing reams and reams of writing. You don't even have that much space, okay? Then question two, which is again related to text one, the unseen text, it's worth four marks. Now, for this question, in terms of the wording, this question always asks you something along the lines of look at lines and then you're given the line numbers. And then it asks you, in your own words, discuss X, Y, Z. So again, you're discussing the keywords in the question. If it's asking in your own words, what you cannot do for this question is quote from the text, okay? You interpret it using your own words. You're not using the same words as in the text, okay? Again, this is worth four marks. Spend five minutes and you move on, okay? Make sure you're always keeping an eye on the time. Be very, very strict and very vigilant about how you are allocating your time. Now, question three, this is the third question related to text one, the unseen text. Now, question three, which is worth five marks, I would suggest spending seven minutes on this question. And the wording of this question is always something along the lines of, from lines, you're given a line numbers. Explain what we learn about key word, okay? Now, do bear in mind there's always a theme that comes up. There's always something generally that comes up. And we're gonna see this in a past paper question that I have prepared for one of the unseen texts. And you're gonna see that there's a kind of theme that crops up, okay? So these key words are always related to this theme. And the theme obviously also links to the Edexcel anthology, so the IGCSE anthology text that you're going to be asked to work with and to compare it to. And of course, these are the texts that you've seen before, okay? Now, text two, so this is now the text from the non-fiction anthology. Text two 
asks you, uh, um, only, or rather in other words, question four is now where you have to link it to text two. Okay, so I'm going to rephrase myself again. Now, questions one to three are related to text one. Then question four is now where text two, this is the text taken from the anthology, the one that you've prepared for, the one that you've done all of these hours of study for. Now this is where you're going to be asked a question related specifically to that text, not the first text, but just specifically to the scene text, okay? Now this question, question four, is worth 12 marks and what I would suggest in terms of timing, you want to spend 14 minutes on this question, okay? You want to kind of develop your answer. Now, in terms of the wording and the phrasing of this question, you're often asked to look at language and structure. So this is a language and structure question, okay? So, as I've mentioned, questions one to three, they ask you uh, questions related to text one. Then question number four is the first question you get related to text two. This is the scene anthology. Then finally, you have question five in section A. Now, question five is the question where you now have to compare text one and text two. And this question is worth 22 marks. So for this question, I would suggest spending 28 minutes. Now, remember when I was mentioning for question one, two, three, the 3.5, so three and a half minutes, seven, uh, five minutes and seven minutes. The reason why you want to be really strict is so that you can give yourself enough time, sufficient amounts of time in order to allocate it to the 12 marker and especially the 22 marker. It's really really silly if you spend lots of time on the first three questions and you run out of time and you find yourself rushing through the latter questions question uh, four and five because that's where the bulk of the marks are okay now for question five in terms of wording it's always something to do with compare dot 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 ideas and perspectives how both writers show the ideas and perspectives on the theme that is explored or on the keywords that are explored within both texts okay now in total in terms of when you're working through section a this is the non-fiction text in total of this two hours 15 minutes you should be allocating half of this time which is in total 67 and a half minutes of your time in this exam okay of course this is the time that's given for the paper if you do have extra time do the relevant maths in order to kind of allocate and add your extra minutes so if you have extra time just do the relevant maths however if we're just strictly looking at the timings for this paper this would be my suggestion in terms of how to allocate your time effectively for the section a questions and please remember do not spend too much time on questions one to three the bulk of your time should be spent on question four and five but then once your 67 and a half minutes is over you move on okay so let's look at section b now, as I mentioned, for section B, this is a really important section because it counts for half of the overall paper's marks. So, in other words, if you have in total two hours and 15 minutes for the entire paper, you want to allocate half of that time for section B because it counts for exactly half of the marks available for this question. Therefore, my advice for section B is you want to spend one hour and 7.5 minutes, in other words, seven and minutes and 30 seconds, so an hour and seven minutes and 30 seconds in total for this section, okay? Now, this is the section which is essentially called transactional writing. In other words, you are producing a non-fiction piece of text. Now, for this section, Firstly, you always have either a question six or seven. Now, bear in mind, you're not to answer both of the questions. You only pick one question and then you answer that question for the remaining time. You never pick both questions, okay? Now, in terms of what you should anticipate for either question, because this is the non-fiction form of writing, it's always gonna be either a newspaper, magazine, website, speech or letter, some kind of question related to that. And do make sure that you check out the videos that I've created and the lessons that I've created relating on how to develop a newspaper article, a uh, magazine article, a letter and speech and so on, if you're not sure. And if you're curious to kind of know how to plan that type of response. However, going back to this, Question six or seven will give you a choice of either or you pick whichever one you think you're going to kind of enjoy writing about. And you then after you've picked your question six or question seven, remember in terms of timing, you've got one hour, 7.5 minutes in total. This is how I would suggest you spend your time in terms of how to manage section B. Firstly, spend 15 minutes planning. OK, so 15 minutes might seem like a really long time to plan, but Honestly, this time, if you invest it well, if you invest it in a detailed plan, and make sure you write the detailed plan, by the way, in your exam transcript, okay? So that, for example, if you run out of time, or if there's kind of 
any issues, your examiner, when they're reading over your transcript, they can also see that you've created a really detailed plan. Don't spend more than 15 minutes though, but 15 minutes is a really good chunk of time to spend in planning this writing. The reason why I suggest this amount of time rather than just five minutes or 10 minutes is because firstly, two hours and 15 minutes is a long time to be writing. So bear in mind that you've, you're already one hour and seven minutes into the paper. So you're in section, you finished off section A. Maybe you're starting to feel a little bit tired. You're still feeling alert, but you're starting to get a little bit tired. Therefore, as you're getting a little bit tired, you're more prone to forget some of the ideas. Now, if you jump straight into writing the answer and now you're kind of two hours in 15 on your last 15 minutes, what tends to happen, you're really tired. You're struggling maybe with the stress of making sure you get everything done in time. And what tends to happen is your mind is wandering. It's going in 10 different directions. And therefore, what happens as a result to your writing, if what you've written is not very well planned, is it's going to go everywhere. Now, if you invest this time, so the 15 minutes into actually planning, it means that even as you're getting tired and you, you know, as the time is going, if your mind is wandering or if you're feeling stressed or if you even forget what you're going to write about, you go back to your plan, remind yourself, and then you say, right, that's exactly what I was going to write. And also for the reader, for the examiner who finally reads what you've written, it also will have a really good structure, okay? So 15 minutes might seem like a really long time, but honestly, I would suggest for a really good plan and for something of this nature, because it counts for half of the marks, make sure you try and spend 15 minutes planning. Then after you've spent those 15 minutes planning, you spend, I would say roughly 47 and a half minutes writing. So obviously writing out in different sections, depending on the type of writing you're expected to produce. And then finally, make sure you allocate five minutes at the end to just skim reading what you've read. You know, picking out, you know, maybe spelling errors, anything that you've written that maybe you might have missed. Of course, by the time that, you know, you're in the last five minutes of a two, two hour and 15 minutes exam, you're probably, your brain is a little bit frazzled. However, you might find some glaring errors that perhaps you didn't pick up on as you were writing. So this five minutes is also really good to just quickly pick up on that. However, as I mentioned, the majority and the bulk of your time should be spent actually writing, but also try and allocate at least 15 minutes to planning. Now it's really tempting to look at this 15 minutes and say, uh, I'm gonna spend those 15 minutes in section A. But what you're doing is you're sacrificing the maximum amount of marks you can get for section B, okay? That is not good planning or time management. Be really strict with yourself. Be really strict with yourself in terms of how you allocate time for section A, how you allocate time for questions one, two, three, four, and five. But then once that time is up, move on, okay? That is one of the major ways that you can really separate yourself from either getting a level five, level four mark versus a top level eight and level nine mark. It's both content, so writing really good stuff, but also having the time, that's the second element, to write this good content, okay? If you're squandering all of this time on section A and you simply run out of time, the examiner won't know the good content you have because you just didn't give yourself enough time to do so, okay? So I would say keep these timings really sacred, okay? It's really, really important how you allocate and always have just a cheap Casio rich wristwatch or something. Don't take things like Apple watches because they're not allowed into examples, but just have a wristwatch with you in the example as well the, there are different clocks around the room be very strict and very vigilant and very disciplined about how you allocate your time okay so just to quickly recap in terms of timing spend 15 minutes planning your question 47 and a half minutes writing and then five minutes at the end reading over your answer and of course that will mean the total time you've spent on section b is one hour and seven and a half minutes so that's really it when it comes to what to anticipate for english language a uh, paper and of course do make sure you read uh, and re-watch this video and make note of these timings and always remember that these timings are very sacred really take it into account and bear in mind that anytime you overspend time on one question know that you're sacrificing another question and the marks that you can get from that okay so thanks so much for listening